Hello, our uh, dear viewers, and welcome to a new edition of our program Africa uh, Today. In today's edition, we are going to talk about Egypt affirming its keenness to interact effectively with peace, security, and the challenges in uh, the African continent. But as usual, we'll start with our uh, news uh, from Africa and our reports where Sudan and the United States signed an agreement in uh, uh, order to restore the African country's sovereign uh, immunity. The ministry said in a statement that agreement would settle case uh, brought against Sudan in the U.S. Uh, courts. More details follow. The Sudanese Ministry of Justice said that Sudan and the United States signed an agreement to restore the African country's sovereign immunity. The ministry said in a statement the agreement will settle cases brought against Sudan in U.S. courts, including for the bombing of U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania in 1998, for which Sudan has agreed to pay $335 million to victims. The deal is part of a U.S. pledge to remove Sudan from its designation as a state sponsor of terrorism, which goes back to its toppled ruler Omar al-Bashir when Washington believed the country was supporting militant groups. President Donald Trump said this month that the United States will remove Sudan from the list as soon as Khartoum sets aside the $335 million it has agreed to pay to Armenian victims of militant attacks and their families. Sudan has under U.S. pressure also agreed to normalize ties with Israel, making Khartoum the third Arab government after the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain to establish relations with Israel in the last two months. Senegal's government said that the death toll of 140 people in migrant boats sinking last week cited by the International Office for Migrant was unfounded. More details. Senegal's government said that a death toll of 140 people in a migrant boat sinking last week, cited by the International Office for Migration, was unfounded. The government previously said that about 10 people have died in the sinking last week, with about 60 people rescued. But the United Nations body IOM announced a total of 140 people based on interviews with members of the local communities the migrants departed from, who indicated that around 200 people were on board. The Interior Ministry nonetheless said that a fishing boat had this week discovered six dead bodies floating in the sea. A spokesman for the IOM's regional office from the West and Central Africa could not be reached for comment. Senegalese government spokesperson said that a rise in the migrant vessels departing from the country West Africans desperate to get to Europe have increasingly opted to take the Atlantic route to Spain's Canary Islands in recent years as authorities have clamped down on crossings from Libya. According to the IOM, at least 251 people died attempting the crossing between January the 1st and September 17th, compared to 210 fatalities from the whole of last year. Ivory Coast citizens went to the polls on Saturday even as some opposition supporters healing a call from two rival candidates of the president, al Sani Ouattara, for a boycott over his bid for a third term tried to disrupt the vote. More details with Abir Mitwali. Ivory Coast went to the polls on Saturday as President Alassane Quattara seeks a third term in an election. Two rival candidates have urged the supporters to boycott. 30 people have died in violence in the lead-up to the election, which is seen as a test to the stability in the world's top cocoa producer and one of Africa's fastest-growing economies. The street clashes have brought back memories of the 2010 vote that Quattara won, but which unleashed a brief civil war that killed three thousand people when his predecessor Gabago refused to step down. The recent violence had pitted the 78-year-old president's supporters against those of his opponents who say he is breaking the law by running again because the constitution limits residents to two terms and is jeopardizing the country's hard-earned economic gains. Quattra says he can run again under a new constitution approved in 2016 and is doing so only because his hand-picked successor died unexpectedly in July. Critics say his candidacy is a fresh blow to West African democracy following Mali's military coup in August and Guinea President Alpha Condi's successful third term bid this month. His two main rivals, former President Henry Conan, 
and former Prime Minister Pascal have called for an election boycott. The government said it would deploy 35,000 soldiers and police officers on election day. افريقيا ثارت وافريقيا تحررت افريقيا ناضلت وافريقيا ضحت افريقيا اليوم نتيجة للثورة ونتيجة للنضال ونتيجة للتضحية مستقلة افريقيا الان تستقل إلى أقصى الغرب ومن أقصى الشمال إلى أقصى الجنوب وملحمة مشرفة من النضال المشترك دشنها الآباء المؤسسون عبد الناصر ونكرومة وسيكوتوري وبين بيلا وهيلا سلاسي وبوديبوكيتا وصولا لمانديلا فانتماء مصر لأفريقيا ليس فقط لاعتبارات التاريخ والجغرافيا And of course, our dear viewers, Egypt is affirming its keenness to interact effectively with peace, security, challenges in the African continent. To shed more light on that, we are very much delighted to have with us over the phone Mr. Raouf Gafar, our economic expert. Mr. Raouf, always a pleasure to have you with us, sir. Hello. Thank you, my dear. Hello. <coughs> uh, Mr. Raouf, Egypt uh, concluded its months-long presidency of the African Union Peace and Security Council. <coughs> uh, the baton was handed over by Osama Abdel Khaled, the country's permanent representative uh, to the AU. Uh, he said that Egypt uh, leadership of the council aimed to implement the rapid interaction with various peace and the security challenges in the African continent. What's your take on that, uh, Mr. Gaffer? Uh, first of all, I don't want to die. The uh, that uh, Egypt uh, exerts uh, towards uh, achieving uh, peace and security over the uh, African continent yes. through its uh, presidency or uh, of this uh, council or uh, of this committee or whatever. I mean, we have been uh, working on establishing uh, peace and security all over the continent yes. before we preside, and I'm sure we will continue after we leave the presidency. So yes. I don't want to tie both. But I want to stress on the fact that Egypt has always been uh, there behind all the uh, attempts to achieve uh, uh, comprehensive uh, settlements and accords between uh, co conflicting uh, uh, factions all over. I don't want to specify a particular uh, country, but we have been there mm. in any uh, conflict that took uh, or uh, 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 arrive there, yes. uh, in any country. And uh, we have been, alhamdulillah, thank God, successful yes. in achieving uh, the goals uh, everywhere we step in. So I'm sure that uh, 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 we will continue uh, doing that. And uh, it's not only a matter of signing uh, uh, an accord or a uh, 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 settlement or what have you, but uh, the important thing is to follow up uh, on that, and mm. this is the responsibility of uh, the Council in yes. particular and of the uh, African Union in general Indeed. to see that any uh, settlement or agreement signed is to be respected and is to be uh, followed uh, forever, hopefully, John. Indeed. Uh, Sir Ambassador Abdel Khaled praised the Peace and Security Council for putting forward an Egyptian initiative at its first session in which it discussed the phenomenon of the foreign terrorist fighters and their impact on peace and security in the African uh, continent. Can you shed more light on that? Yes, I mean the initiative uh, was talking about uh, 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 finding a way to yes. pick out 
the um, uh, forces intervening in Africa, particularly the mercenaries and uh, yes. uh, terrorists and what have you. Uh, one uh, thing that is really behind all the conflicts and all the turmoil that happen is the fact that a lot of foreign forces are in yes. And when I say forces, I put it into between two big brackets because it might be uh, forces coming from one country or uh, forces, um, as you said, uh, mm. terrorists or mercenaries. So uh, this was the initiative and uh, it has to be implemented. I mean, we've, uh, we, we see until today uh, and, uh, and mercenaries foreign forces, I mean, and mercenaries intervening uh, in the internal affairs of some African countries yes. and leading chaos in Germany. So this has, uh, one way or the other, it has yes. to stop. And I'm sure that Egypt started with the initiative and mm. follow up on it in a, in a way that hopefully in the future we should get rid of all the, the foreigners that are intervening in the internal affairs. Yes, indeed. Uh, of the African countries, uh, obstructing uh, the, the, the peace and security uh, in these areas. Afar, the Peace and Security Council has recently begun considering the various aspects of a proposal to form an African counter-terrorism force, which will come as part of the African standby force. How do you see this uh, proposal and are you with this idea? Uh, of course, in any, mm. any uh, initiative that leads to getting rid of uh, terrorism is appreciated and is uh, uh, commended. However, uh, I, I cannot see the, 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 uh, uh, the steps to, be to form such forces. I mean, who will, uh, who will participate? Uh, uh, where uh, would it intervene? I mean, there are a lot, a lot of things uh, to be uh, thought of, a lot of paramet parameters to be uh, discussed before we uh, form such forces. I mean, uh, uh, you can understand the peacekeeping forces, for instance, of the United Nations, they come upon the request of uh, combating or uh, uh, different countries. But uh, when we're talking uh, forces uh, to, to, to uh, combat the terrorism, uh, it, it needs to be well trained. It needs to be, uh, uh, I mean, you know, when we're talking terrorism in Egypt, uh, the Egyptians, they know how to fight them and how to get rid of them. But when we're talking terrorism, maybe in another African country, you should uh, use the, uh, the the people from the same country to know how to fight their terrorism. So it is, of course, an idea, uh, an excellent idea, and we all, we all aspire to have a, a terrorist-free Africa, but it needs a lot of study and it needs a lot of preparation. But I wish they come to uh, a formula where uh, these forces can be uh, can work in any African country where terrorism and there are a lot of African countries, unfortunately, where terrorism is representing a big hurdle. Uh, to security and peace in the The efforts uh, exerted by the Egyptian diplomacy in leading one of the most important African decision making bodies were greatly appreciated and widely praised. How uh, do you see the efforts exerted by Egypt? Egypt has never sought uh, 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 pressure and power yes. toward establishing peace and security all over. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we, if we, uh, remember, um, I don't want to say most, but I would say 90% of the uh, conflicts uh, that uh, took place in different African countries over the last years, mm -hmm. uh, it was Egypt behind the uh, settlement and behind the accord that was signed. So yes. uh, Egypt has never spared an effort. It's the conviction of our president, it's the conviction of our government. Uh, to have uh, a stable, secure, and peaceful Africa. Mm. And we will not fail at any time to do our utmost to achieve this noble goal.
Indeed, uh, Mr. Rauf Gafar, our economic expert, uh, always a pleasure to listen to your very precious input. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for being our guest for today. And our dear uh, viewers, that would bring us to the end of this edition of Africa Today, brought to you live here from our studios on Night International. I'm Hissi Rabia. Thank you very much for watching.